In this video, I'm going to share three of the very best garage band tips from the channel that help you tweak and refine your mixes and get them ready for release. GarageBand's built-in pitch correction isn't fancy, but in most straightforward situations can absolutely get the job done. To find GarageBand's built-in pitch correction, first select the track you want to apply it to, then click on the Editors button to open the Editor window. In the Editor window, you can select between two different tabs, Track and Region. Track is the tab you want, and you'll see the pitch correction options appear underneath it. If the first thing you need to do before adding pitch correction to your vocal track is to identify the key of the project you're working on. The type of automatic pitch correction that GarageBand uses will attempt to correct a wrong note to the nearest correct note in the key that your project is in. So if you don't set the project key correctly, the pitch correction will attempt to correct the wrong note and things will end up sounding a bit weird. There's ten hand spans between us It feels like so much more Tonight If you don't know the key of your project, a really quick and easy way to figure it out is to open up a software instrument track, open musical typing and sort of hunt around until you find a note that sounds just about right anywhere in the song. There's ten hand spans between us It feels like so much more Tonight The C is the tonic here, so the project is in the key of C. To change the key signature of your project, click on the LCD at the top of the screen to open a menu where you can switch to different key signatures. GarageBand defaults to C major, but you can change the key of your song and whether it's major or minor here. With that done, you can either record vocals with pitch correction applied to them or apply the effect to your recordings after the fact. Personally, I always record a clean version of a vocal track first of all, and then apply auto-tune and any other effects to it after the fact, but you do what works for you. Alright, that's how GarageBand's stock pitch correction works. Here are a couple of free to download alternatives. Definitely a step up from GarageBand's single pitch correction slider, but still incredibly easy to use. Spot On by Developer Sixth Sample is a great option for those looking to take a bit more control over their auto-tuned audio. The plugin utilises a simple plug and play workflow really. Just load it up as a plugin on your vocal track and pitch correction will be applied as soon as you move the amount knob. If the resulting vocal is too auto-tuned and robotic sounding for your taste, you can use the speed knob to make the pitch correction sound more natural. There's ten hand spans between us It feels like You can also use the keyboard at the bottom of the interface to define the scale. This will ensure that pitch is corrected to the notes that fit your song. There's ten hand spans between us It feels like so much more Tonight There's ten Holding the command key on your typing keyboard allows you to actually select a scale and whether it's major tonight. or minor. There's ten hand spans between us It feels like so much more Tonight Spot On is a great middle ground between GarageBand's basic built-in pitch correction option and the more advanced plugin we'll look at next. This is M Auto Pitch by developer Melda Production. M Auto Pitch gives you a lot more fine control over how you apply pitch correction to your vocals than either of the previous two options. 
There is an in-depth manual for this plugin that explains every single knob, switch and feature. I'm not going to cover everything here as I don't want to bore you to tears, but I will put a link to that manual down below the like button if you like the looks of this plugin and want to check it out. For now though, here are some of the plugin's standout features and controls. The depth and speed knobs act as kind of the equivalent to GarageBand's single slider. The depth control defines how accurate the output should be. With 100% depth, the output usually sounds machine-like, but exactly in tune. Ten hand between us. There's ten hand spans between us. There's ten hand spans between us. With lower depth, the plugin tolerates more deviations and your vocal will sound more natural. There's ten hand spans between us. There's ten hand spans between us. It feels like so much more. And the speed knob controls how quickly the plugin adjusts when a note has been changed. Higher speed makes the results immediately in tune, but can cause those more robotic and less natural results. There's ten hand spans between us. It feels like so much more tonight. The formant shift control lets you manually alter the formant information in semitones, which generally results in no pitch shifting, but can create a number of interesting effects, like making a male voice sound more feminine. Spans between us. It feels like so much more tonight. Or reproducing that popular low or high formant sound you hear artists like Black Bear or Tame Impala use. between us. It feels like so much more. Tonight. You can even automate the formant changes using GarageBand's automation, which works really well. There's ten hand spans between us. It feels like so much more tonight. M Auto Pitch also comes with some really useful presets. If you've been dying to cover shares, do you believe in life after love? And let's be honest, who hasn't? This is the preset for you. Spans between us. There's ten hand spans between us. It feels like so much more. You can switch from a male vocal to a female vocal and vice versa. There's ten hand spans between us. 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 Or you can use one of the properly useful stereo doubler presets to really thicken up your vocal. Ten hand spans between us. It feels like so much more tonight. There's ten hand spans between us. It feels like so Creating a fade in is really straightforward using GarageBand's automation feature and the master track. Any effects or automation changes you make to the master track affect the project as a whole, so instead of manually adjusting the volume of every single track in a project one by one, we can use GarageBand's master track to essentially do it all at once. To show the master track in your project, head to the toolbar at the top of the screen, select track, then select show master track from the menu. Next, we need to use automation to adjust the volume level of the master track over time. Select Mix from the toolbar and then select Show Automation from the menu. 
or I can hit the A key on my typing keyboard. In the Master Tracks track header, this drop down menu has appeared. From here, we can select many different parameters to automate. It's set to volume by default, though, and that's the parameter we want. Next, I want to make sure I'm at the start of the project. Then I can click along this automation line, or curve as it's called, to create automation points. I'll keep it simple here and just start with a couple. Now, if I click and drag this first point down to zero and hit play, the volume automatically increases from the first point to the second. In your project, you'll probably want to play around with this a bit so that it sounds just right. Creating a fade out at the end of your project is far more straightforward. In fact, GarageBand can actually make one for you. Simply select Mix from the toolbar and then select Create Volume Fade Out on Main Output from the menu. GarageBand automatically creates several automation points at the end of your project. This automation curve has between three and four points on it and is gradually decreasing. Here's what it sounds like. Note that GarageBand will create this fade out up to the position of the end of project marker. That's this really quite hard to see triangle right at the very end of the project. Making sure that this is properly positioned at the end of your project is really important in order for this automatic fade out to work properly. You can move it by clicking on it and dragging it, though it can be quite fiddly, so resizing the zoom level here might be necessary. Alright, here's a real audio track that I've recorded into. There are a couple of really noticeable timing errors. Have a listen. In order to fix these out of time notes, I'll first need to open the editor window. With the audio track selected, I can click on this icon in the top left corner, or alternatively select Show Editor from the View menu in the toolbar at the top of the screen, or use the keyboard shortcut E. Down in the Editor window, I need to make sure that the Enable Flex box is ticked in the Track tab. Clicking a peak in the waveform, also known as a transient, adds a flex marker that I can then use to move that part of the waveform. Flex markers are automatically added to give a kind of audio point of reference for when you start to move things around. So if I click on and drag the flex marker I've created on my dodgy note, then drag and drop it so that it's in line with the rest of my project, yep, that sounds better. I'll do the same for this other dodgy note too. Notice that I'm able to zoom in and out of the waveform by using this slider. OK, let's see how that recording sounds now that I've used flex time to fix those out of time notes. Much better. A bit of advice here to end on, while flex time is a powerful tool and a really handy way to correct deep odd timing mishap, it's important to recognise when you're able to salvage a slightly off recording with it, and when you should really just chalk it up to experience and just straight out re-record that vocal, guitar part, bass line, etc. 
Thanks so much for watching to the end. If you found this video helpful, please give that like button a good hard slap and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And for more really helpful GarageBand for Mac tips, watch this video next.